Welcome to the Medical Menemist Podcast, your source for memory techniques and accelerated learning in higher education. Now, here's your host, Chase DeMarco. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to try something a little newer. Due to popular request, we've had some requests to do a little more of a how-to instead of just an interview version of the podcast. So, Today we're going to cover a couple of topics and questions and mistakes that I have heard many times and a lot of them that I've had myself in the past and some I still do. In fact, a lot of this list that we're going to cover today are issues that I've had before and sentences that I've said before. So it'll be a great way to cover some of the misunderstandings and misconceptions when it comes to learning these types of memory techniques and accelerated learning techniques in your studies. The first one is... I want to find the best memory technique. So something that's really important to understand is there's no the way. There's no best technique. There are tools that you can learn about and use and add to your toolbox. Just like there are different types of wrenches. There's socket wrenches, Allen wrenches, uh, adjustable wrenches. There are different types of knives like utility knives, steak knives, butter knife, chef knife. They all seem like the same thing. They're in the genre of wrench or the genre of knives, but they have vastly different purposes and you can use the wrong tool to accommodate multiple actions, but it's not going to work as well. So step number one is to learn about the different types of techniques, learn about the different tools that you can implement into your studies. And by knowing more about your different options, you'll have more to choose from. You'll be able to pick the right one when the occasion arises. Another one is I don't know enough yet, so I have to study more first. This is the issue with theory versus practice, and it's pervasive in everything from everyday life and academics, and when do you stop learning and start implementing? And really, you should start implementing as soon as possible. You can still study on the side, but the more you focus on implementing the practice, stop reading about the theory and using the techniques, the better you'll become, the quicker you'll become more efficient. Now, I still have this problem a lot. I love to read about the techniques. I love to hear other people interviewed about them. I listen to podcasts and read books and watch YouTube videos from some of the best nemonists out there. But the more you put these into place, and the sooner you put them into place, and the more you try out the different tools we were talking about, the different tools you have learned, the better you will become. It's as simple as that. Persistence and practice. Also, when you're practicing, make sure not to try to wait until the end of the day when you're fatigued to try out a new practice. A rested mind is going to be the best. So sometimes I would study for seven, eight, nine hours a day, especially during medical school, and then try to practice some of these techniques when I felt like I had completed enough, that I'd studied enough of my mandatory studying for that day. Well, then my mind was too shot. It was just worn out. It couldn't put in the mental energies needed for this type of practice. And these are very heavy cognitive load practices. They require a rested mind. They require cognitive energy. So rest up, do it first thing in the morning, or at least before the evening when you start getting fatigued, maybe meditate beforehand. Whatever gets your mind in a rested and relaxed situation, that would be a good time to try to practice these. Another one is, this person is a fraud. They forgot X or Y fact at some point. Well, Criticizing someone else because they can't remember a fact, even if they are a memory trainer, if they are a nemonist, doesn't mean that they're a fraud, doesn't mean that they're not equipped to learn from. It just means that we forget. Our memories are fallible. Forgetting curve is always upon us. Training does not mean never forgetting. It does not equal an eidetic memory. We will not become photographic memory experts from learning these techniques. But the more we can study the different techniques and different tools, the more we can practice spacing out and recalling our practice, our mnemonics, our memory palaces, the better we will remember. It also has to be interesting. I don't have my credit card numbers memorized. Why? Because it's boring. Could I do it? Sure. Do I want to? Not really. So finding something that's interesting to learn about, or at least making boring material seem interesting and usable in your everyday life, is going to make it something that you can concentrate on spending the time to learn properly and to learn for the long term. How exactly you make boring material interesting and useful for you 
is really going to be independent. It's going to depend on you and what you can do to become more creative and think of ways to make it more useful for you or maybe more useful for someone else. Something that is often cited in uh, gratitude training is not to think of it in a selfish manner. Think of how this technique or this action that you are performing is going to help someone else. Maybe that'll be your token to making it more useful. Think about your patients, about family that you can relate the material to. Another quote is, I've read this book and I've watched this video, but I'm still struggling. I must have a bad memory. Well, again, this comes back to you get what you put into it. Yes, we all kind of have quote unquote bad memories and the aspect that we evolved to not remember everything because we don't need to. We're, we're flooded with sensory information all day, every day. Our brains aren't meant to handle remembering all of that. But when it comes to information that you have to remember that for your studies, for your personal use, for your personal life, it really comes into what you put into it. The more time and energy you put into it, the more thoughtful you are maybe about it and spacing out your repetitions properly, and the more persistent you are, diligent in your education, in your self-studies, the longer these are going to last, the stronger your memory is going to be for those topics. Don't think just because you read something or watched something or tried out one technique and it didn't work for this topic that you're going to fail, that you won't be able to get better at these techniques later on. And also play around with different ones. Like we mentioned with the tools, if you're using the wrong tool, you might get the job done, but not as effectively as you could. So it might be time to mix up your practice, try something different, learn a different technique, ask someone else for their advice. This is actually one of the reasons we have the Medical Anemonist Mastermind on uh, Facebook, a group that you can all join and share your ideas. I'd really like to see more activity on that group as well. Share how you conquer certain tasks, how you've accomplished certain memory feats. Everyone wants to hear how someone else did it, and those examples, especially medical-specific examples, can help everyone else that's listening and reading the posts utilize a wider variety of techniques and have concrete examples of how to use them. Another similar one is, I tried this technique, but it failed. So try a different technique, or use the technique for different topics, or add something to it. Maybe add other senses. If you're only using visual cues, maybe try to add an audio cue or a sensory cue. Maybe this room of a memory palace is hot or cold. Maybe the humidity is different. Maybe there's wind blowing. Maybe there's an emotional tone to it. This one, I just feel like it's a shady room. This one feels a little more peaceful, a little more lighthearted. Adding different senses and context can help strengthen any uh, mnemonic that you've created in the past. One that used to get me all the time is I had a great memory palace and I placed everything and it worked out great at first, but after a few weeks, it kind of faded away. Well, this is when organization is really key when you're planning out a larger memory palace. Some people are better at making them on the go. And especially if you hear some of our past episodes with memory champions, they have to do that. They have to remember dozens to hundreds to thousands of different facts, numbers, faces, uh, words in a matter of a couple minutes. So they have to go quick. When able, and especially it seems to be more for medical students, graduate students that are used to an organized fashion in which they plan their studies, it makes sense to organize how you're going to set up your memory palace as well. It also helps to have backups, keeping palace tables in like Excel sheets or in a Word document or a table where you have a list of all of the different memory palaces that you've created before, what place it reminds you of, friends, families, restaurants, libraries, any place that you've ever been, any road you've ever walked down or ridden a bike, and put what you associate with that palace in a table somewhere so you have a quick review. You can also sketch out different palaces or mind maps or other documentation as a review. That way, if you spent a lot of time and you had a really good one, but several weeks later you forgot your spaced repetition maybe, or you just got really busy, maybe there is some life event that happened and you didn't get to solidify the memory properly. Well, having a backup, having some sketches or something to refer to is really, really helpful. I know how frustrating it can be to lose a great mnemonic and having a backup is a great way to avoid that failure. And the last thing I really want to cover is implementing deliberate practice. And this is in general, especially for any kind of graduate student, you need to learn about deliberate practice and how to improve, how to keep striving for greater efficiency and mastery of the topic. 
whether it be for memory techniques, accelerated learning techniques, or just your general studies, you want to receive feedback. So you can't do this in isolation. If you have a friend, talk to them about it, family member, someone that'll understand. Find a forum, find our Facebook group, find another memory forum or study forum that's similar. Someplace you feel free to discuss the topics you've been covering and the manners in which you've been covering it. Receive feedback on how to get better, how to improve. Maybe older classmen, or if you have a good teacher or mentor you can turn to. And then mix it up. Try something that you've plateaued on in a different manner. It's just like an exercise workout. Once you plateau at a certain point, you have to change out your workout routine. Otherwise, you're not going to see continued growth. It's the same with your studies. We just don't generally think of it that way. We're not taught it that way. So make sure to implement these different tactics, these different techniques, and don't get too frustrated if you're running into some obstacles. There's always ways around them. You just have to find out what it is or find someone that can help you find out how to get around it. So that's it for now. If you like this narrative view, then we can do a few more podcasts like this in the future. Just let us know, write some comments, join us on Facebook, Twitter. All of our contact information is, as always, in the show notes. And any other recommendations, we'd be glad to get more specific about certain topics or give more examples. Hope to hear from you soon and have a great week.